All right, we're back, and this time what we're going to do is make a another pencil, digital pencil, but we're going to use a traditional texture. So I'm just going to bring in a scan that I actually made. Let's just dock this up here. And this is, um, let me go ahead and zoom in on this. There's a couple blemishes on it, but this is a piece of Canson paper, I believe, or some other kind of drawing paper. Um, and you can see the texture in there. And um, so we're going to go ahead and make a texture out of this because that it, it kind of sounds right. I mean, it's a, it's a regular piece of paper or a natural piece of paper that you might draw on. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm going to crop it down a little. There's a little black area up here that I don't like. So I'm going to crop in. Now, this is just a scan right off of my scanner. There's also... A lot of times your scanner bed will kind of darken. It's kind of going dark over here. I'm just going to move over from that too. And then down here, same thing. Um, I tried to hold and press the paper down into the corners, but this one actually got a little bit darker right there. So I'm just going to crop that out. And you can see that. Um, and then what I want to do is increase um, the levels. And I want to increase the contrast on on this. So I'm going to image adjustment levels and I'm just going to darken it and with that little control over there and then lighten it on this side. Let's darken it some more. Lighten it up a little bit. Probably right there. We'll also discard um, the color. So I'll go to image mode and then grayscale just to get rid of the color. You can see these couple of blemishes here there's a little fold that was in the paper there and then this dark spot if we um, if we were to use this as a texture and try to draw with it it actually would not be seamless it would have these seams um, against the edge so this edge it will actually do a thing called tiling and uh, I'm gonna just describe what it will do what rather than show you but what will happen is if you use this as a, on a high-res image um, it, it's going to use this, your, your pencil's using this texture and it's mapping from this texture as you're drawing. But if you get over to this edge or into over it, to any edge, it will make a mirror image of that texture and start over again. Well, when this goes dark right here, it's going to line up over here on this side. And so you're going to actually see a line whenever you cross over that plane. Whenever you, you're, you need more texture, I guess, so to speak, you will draw through one of the edges you won't feel it or see it, but you'll actually see it in your drawing and that will be disheartening. So to get rid of that, we're going to make it a seamless texture or a nearly seamless texture by going to filter and then other and then offset. And you can see what it already did. Um, these little sliders right here will actually move the edges around. Um, and that's how bad that image is. When these, when these dark spots are on the edge, you don't notice it as much because it's just gradually fading to dark and then it just disappears off the edge but when you put them in the middle all of a sudden you can see all the problems and you can see those two blemishes there I'll, t I'll see if I can move those into the middle a little bit more like that maybe and then change the vertical yeah so we get them right there because I want to make sure I get rid of those click OK so now we've uh, offset the image a little bit and then I'm going to go to this patch tool now you might have a different tool on top, mine's on top because I use that one, but it's hiding under the spot healing brush or the healing tool. Anyway, go to the patch tool. I like to, s to select the destination. That means I get to choose the good area and move it onto the bad area. You can also choose the source, move the bad area onto the good area. I just It feels right for me to pick an area like this that I really like and I'm just using the mouse. And all I do is just draw a circle and then click and move it over. And it will figure out how to fit that in there. And then kind of do the same thing here and move it over onto that seam. And it'll kind of try to, Photoshop will kind of do some calculations and try to um, average that in, which is really good for us because that would be really hard to do without some kind of a computer program. Now, it's not perfect but it does pretty good and when you're talking about using a little tiny pencil with texture it's going to be just fine I guarantee it so move that over there you might have to do this a few times you know um, 
you're mostly trying to get the big spots. Like there's another spot right there. Um, here's getting rid of that right there. Getting rid of that spot. We still have a seam over here. There's this fold that was in the paper. You can choose to go either way. Um, I think I'll take some of this light area over here and just place it over that right there. Maybe some of that lightness there. Maybe change the source and say this is the problem area. Move that over here. Make it lighter. That's a problem area. Move it over here. So sometimes you have to do both. And that's pretty good. A little, oops, a little seam right there. Oh, that's right. I'm on destination. And for all intents and purposes, I think we're pretty good. Now, what what's happening now is um, these seams do line up. However, sometimes it does have a problem with the edge. If you really want to do it right, you can go back into offset and do it again. I'm not going to do it for the for the sake of this um, demonstration, but um, I am going to go back in and mess with the levels one more time. Just make sure I have enough contrast for the pencil. Okay. Now I'm going to go like we did before to edit and then define pattern. So the, so everything from here on in is going to be the same. I might call this um, uh, traditional paper just to, so we can tell the difference of what that texture is. Um, going into my brush palette, again, in the other video I showed you, you can get it from the window brushes. Um, I have to be on. None of this stuff will show up if I don't actually have the brush checked over here, selected in the toolbox. Go to textures and it's selected on this texture over here. We the, the last one we just added is this one and if you hover over it will tell you what it is. Traditional paper you can see there. Um, and so now that's selected. Again we're going to just go through some of these things I'm going to turn shape dynamics on. I'm going to turn transfer on. When I go to shape dynamics, I'm going to put pen pressure on. Same thing with transfer um, and texture. Remove the contrast down a little bit. Move that to multiply. Uncheck texture each tip, um, and then we'll 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 look at it in the in the file and see what this brush actually kind of looks like here. So. So there's drawing with that, that pencil texture now. If it's too dark, if it just feel, doesn't feel pencil-like, you can move the contrast down. You can move the brightness down. Whatever, whatever feels you know, the best to you. Now, the thing about the, this pencil using something like this is you know, it doesn't have um, the directional qualities that the... That the um, directional brushes have but I find that you can get some really good um, pencil like textures with this and and with the other techniques I'll show you I think a lot of people that are looking at your images online um, or even printed won't know the difference half the time unless they're really into art and they might be able to tell but it'll the thing that you really want is to see that texture that's happening inside because that's what happens when you drag a pencil across paper you get you know it's not it's not it's not like dragging a marker it's not filling in all the gaps it's kind of skipping across the paper and sure you can grind it in there you know you can you can have a darker pencil but that's what these controls will also allow you to do and you can set up different brushes and then save them into your brush palette so if I want this darker one if I want maybe like a 6B pencil maybe that's what this is like right here um, and maybe I have a little bit more, um, little maybe a little less contrast. I could also sharpen it a little bit. Um, and how I did that was, um, it's in brush tip shape um, right here. Uh, you got hardness and softness. There's a great way to do that too with the toggle keys. Um, you'll see me going up and down. I use the bracket keys on my keyboard that are next to the letter P to size my brush up right and I also if you shift 
and hold and and toggle on those keys you can oops you can get a soft brush shift bracket right harder 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 and then super hard okay so um, let's go ahead and save this brush so that we have it in our palette so simply come over here when you're on the brush um, and come to this little uh, palette right here which has got your your uh, brushes and your pencils and stuff in it remember mine is down here um, that's the one that I already made the one that I um, just made now this this darker one let's just go back to that and it'll save it wherever we leave it so let's just say we're gonna save it right here um, so we'll go right here to that palette and then we'll go to this little um, gear and then um, just do new brush preset and it'll allow us to name it and I'll just call it uh, Wills 6B click OK and now it's right here and then if you hover over it it'll say there's Will 6B here's Will's pencil over here and uh, so there you go so that's that's the basics of actually kinda creating that pencil and now in the next videos we'll we'll dive into how to how to get some good um, drawings with those pencils and some different techniques to actually make your your uh, drawings look more natural